Welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson. I'm sitting in an ice fishing shanty in the UP with Brian Whitens. He's from Discovering TV up here in the UP. We're out here ice fishing today, having a blast. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy and the guys have some other fun stuff for us this week too. Well, Jenny, we are pretty excited for that UP ice fishing story. We're going to stay above the bridge in our second story as well this week and learn a little bit more about the Atlantic salmon population. You won't want to miss that. And we're also going to round out this week's show by teaching you a few things about the world of taxidermy. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor the autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's the love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, offering a variety of meat products. Country Smokehouse is located three miles south of I-69 on M53, just south of Imlay City. Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. By Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises of Munising, exploring Lake Superior's Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore with its sandstone cliffs, caves, waterfalls, and lighthouses. Pictured Rocks Boat Cruises on the web at picturedrocks.com. By Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Vanguard. A global manufacturer based in Michigan, featuring rifle scopes, binoculars, and spotting scopes with lifetime warranties. Vanguard supplies sporting optics and accessories for the outdoor enthusiast online at VanguardWorld.com. A couple of weeks ago, Jordan and I were in the UP in Iron County, just outside of Crystal Falls. There were two cameras running out here. One was Jordan's and one belonged to Brian Whitens, producer of Discovering TV show here in the Upper Peninsula. We were tagging along today with Brian and his buddy Dave Grandin. Dave and his fishing buddies set us up in a little corner of Stager Lake for a morning of fun fishing. We're actually out here fishing today with Brian from the TV show called Discovering that's on up here in the UP. It's a very similar show to Michigan Out of Doors and uh, we run into Brian quite a bit when we're in the UP so we thought why not do a story with him. So we're both out here fishing and, and getting footage and um, we'll probably sit down and shoot the breeze with Brian after a little while here but right now the fishing is good so we want to make sure we're, we're on the fish so we're going to catch some fish right now. and. Uh, we're having a blast out here. At least I am. Jordan's got the less fun part of our job today. He's running the camera and watching me catch the fish, but sometimes you draw the short straw. <laughs> the tip-ups were popping and the panfish were biting too. I was just getting settled in when the first fish came my way. <laughs> first fish of the day. Beautiful UP crappie. Awesome. Oh, that's a beautiful speck. Yeah, we're slowly picking away at them. This is really fun to be out here. Uh, we don't get to the UP nearly as often as we'd like to. And I, I think when we come, at least I feel like we, we drive a long way to get up here. And sometimes we feel like we have to do all this kind of high adventure stuff with bigger fish. But there's something to be said about just sitting out on a little lake in the middle of nowhere in the UP and picking away at these panfish. It's a blast out here. It's peaceful. It's fun. We got a big group of good guys out here and nice. cool boy you guys definitely have the right spot here huh well we 
we don't get you in the UP that often, so we want to make sure you, you have fun while you're here. Yeah, when the camera's off, all these guys are doing is making Flatlander jokes and talking about the trolls from below the bridge that come up here. But they're treating us well. Thanks, Dave, for letting me haul in your tip up. Today we're uh, just sitting in a weed line here off the Stager Lake boat landing, catching a few crappies and uh, bluegill. And Jenny's out fishing us. She's already got uh, three on the ice and uh, one northern she just threw back. Uh, wind, windy today. It seems like uh, whenever Brian and I get together, or Jordan, it's always got to be a windy day. But uh, we're doing the best we can here. It's uh, 20 degrees out here right now with probably about a 12, 14 mile an hour wind. And uh, we're just, just getting started here this morning. Today we're fishing for uh, bluegill and crappies, and we got some tip ups set out around us for some northern and walleye. We're sitting here uh, in about 12 feet of water here on the edge of this weed line here on the back side here of this bay. Dave definitely put us on the right spot. We're right on a little drop off here. We're between the pike spearing guys and the tip up guys. <laughs> Sometimes when we ask folks to set us up with a fishing spot on a certain day at a certain time, they feel the pressure and stress out a bit. But Dave and his buddies came through this morning with some great fishing. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Woo! Saved. Saved. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Beautiful. With a few fish on camera, we asked Brian to put down his camera for a minute to sit down and visit with us. That was no small feat either. He is definitely in high gear all day long. When it comes to producing a TV show, Michigan Out of Doors is considered to have a small crew with just the four of us. But Brian is a one-man show, shooting, editing, and hosting a new show every week all by himself. And that's pretty impressive. So Brian, first of all, how long have you been doing this? Because we all know Buck Lavasser had the Discovering TV show for a number of years. How long have you been doing this? No, well, I, Discovering has been about three and a half years now. Okay. Uh, video stuff, maybe 12, 15 years. Okay. So it's so fun to sit down with somebody that does pretty much the exact same thing we do every day for a living and uh, just kind of talk through some of that stuff. But you are strictly in the UP with your TV show, so what are some challenges that, that you face or some things? No, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's great being just in the UP. I mean, I did a show for, for a while up in Canada and out west and wherever, which is great, and I kind of miss the adventure of that sometimes, but it's, uh, I love the UP, so it's nice being in the UP and, and being able to tell the story, different stories of the UP and um, some of the challenges sometimes you run out of stuff <laughs> there's there's 300,000 people and not a whole lot of <laughs> but uh, but for the most part there's always a lot going on there's always something you can find to do and so that's the good parts of it what's your favorite part of the job would you say I think uh, I think the just being able to relay to people to different places and uh, I think one of the greatest things is when I do a show and when it's done, maybe camping somewhere, you go into a, you know, portage in somewhere and spend a couple nights, and and somebody comes back later and says, "Boy, I never knew that was there." And and you find out that you now take their kids there, and they started going there, and they did it because they saw it on the show, and they, they other, otherwise they may not have known about it. You know, I think that's one of the one of the coolest parts. It's, it's just being able to relay that. I think I think back when I when I did the the last show with when Buck was leaving, and I mentioned in there that. Uh, I'm just happy to be the messenger, and it's kind of like that. Uh, just being able to show people things that maybe they do know is there, but they don't have the opportunity to get out there at any given time. So it's uh, it's just yeah. neat. And and, the, and the, obviously the people there's uh, a lot of people go to work go to work and they'll see the same ten or twenty people each day <laughs> uh, doing this. I'm sure as you all well know, by the end of a year you've made 500 new friends. Yeah. You know, you're you're always meeting new people and. Uh, so that never gets old. And, and there's a lot of interesting people in the Upper Peninsula. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I think we're fishing with a few of them today. Probably. <laughs> I'd say these guys are interesting and generous. Dave insisted I bring in every one of his tip-ups that went off. It was a nice break in between the crappies and bluegills to run out and see just what was on the other end of the line. The possibility of pike or walleye made it that much more fun. Is that the same one you caught? I think it is. <laughs> I've never been much of a tip-up angler, but 
It's fun reeling them in. If you can get somebody to set your tip-ups for you, <laughs> and all you have to do is run out and bring them in, it's, it's a lot of fun. Makes it a little easier yeah. for you, huh? <laughs> I think they just call that good guide service. Right. Good guide service indeed. As the wind picked up, we all retreated back to the shanties for some more jigging. Dave hooked into a surprise fish, a little largemouth, and over in our shack, Brian turned the camera on Jordan and I to talk a little about producing Michigan out of doors. We try to get up to the UP. I mean, we'd love to be here every week, but it's such a long haul from downstate. And um, just like Brian, we're putting together 52 new shows a year. So it's tough to get away for any length of time. When we come up, we like to come up for, for a few days if we can. So we're up here doing some fishing. You got some good pike spearing on camera yesterday too, eh? Yeah, I mean, it's been a good trip so far. Um, every time we get up here, like Jenny said, it's usually try to make it at least a week because we don't get up here that often. But the last couple of years, we've done this winter trip, which has been kind of different. We're always up here in the fall. It's so beautiful up here then, but we've done this winter stuff and really starting to have kind of fun learning the ice fishing and the pike spearing and all the other stuff and the predator prey project and the things in the Crystal Falls area. So it's been fun. Yeah, good time. It's been fun indeed, sitting on the ice in the heart of the UP with the buzz of the Vexlar, the hiss of the heater, the howl of the wind, the idle chatter and bursts of laughter from the next shanty over, and the time spent with a couple of great guys who are masters of the craft when it comes to outdoor television. On a day like this, the fish we catch are just a bonus, because the real fun is made in just getting out here and being surrounded by Michigan's out of doors. Well, Jenny and I had a great time on the ice, and it was nice to spend some time with Brian and get to know him a little bit better. For our next story, we're going to stay in the UP, but head way east, all the way over to Lake Superior State University to learn a little bit about Atlantic salmon and their future here in the Great Lakes. Lake Superior State University Aquatic Research Lab, our mission here is to train undergrad students in production and field work. And here we rear and stock Atlantic salmon in, in the St. Mary's River. We've been working with the Atlantic salmon program. We got our first shipment of eggs in 1985 and our first stocking has been in 1987. So everything that we do here, our students are involved with, let it be collecting the adults, taking eggs, fertilizing them to release out. So our goal, what we do here is rear and stock Atlantic salmon into the St. Mary's River, and we're looking at about 25 to 30,000 on an annual basis. Atlantic salmon is a native species in Lake Ontario, so technically in the Great Lakes they are native species. They were wiped out in the turn of the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. And the Atlantic salmon are true trout. They don't typically die after spawning as your Pacific salmon do of what most people think about the Atlantic salmon. They're tough fish to rear, they're tough fish to get to return. This is probably the only place in the upper Great Lakes at this point that you can fish for Atlantic salmon and be successful. The DNR and the university work together on the Atlantic salmon research, and although the university has historically done most of the fish rearing, the DNR has recently started to produce Atlantics as well. Our Atlantic salmon program uh, is ver actually very heavily reliant on the fish that are produced here at, at uh, Lake Superior State University's Aquatics Research Lab. Uh, but we've recently also gotten into the, into the business of producing our own Atlantic salmon. Uh, and at uh, Platte River State Fish Hatchery, we have a pilot program going where we're doing some trial rearing. We're about three or four years into that program now, and our target is to produce about 180,000 yearling Atlantic salmon uh, every year. Uh, and we have four different sites that we stock. We stock a, a number of fish here in the St. Mary's River uh, that are, are supplemental to the, the fish that Lake Superior State University stocks. And we also stock at the Thunder Bay River, uh, the Osable River, and a harbor at uh, Lexington. Uh, also all, all Lake Huron sites besides the St. Mary's River. Beyond the yearling program, we also stock uh, any fish beyond the 180,000 yearlings that we have. Uh, we'll stock as fall fingerlings into Torch Lake. And those fish that have been stocked into Torch Lake have produced a, a, a really good Atlantic salmon fishery, um, an inland fishery. Uh, and that fishery some years is stellar, uh, you know, and, and other years it's maybe not quite as stellar, but it's always a good fishery. 
Uh, and, and that's a good open water fishery and it also provides a, a very solid uh, ice fishery as well. Many anglers on Lake Huron are concerned about what the increase in Atlantic salmon will do to the current fishery. Ed assured me that an increase in Atlantics would in no way hurt the fishery and they are hoping that these fish will help fill a void left by the Chinook salmon. One of the primary reasons that the DNR decided to try and expand the Atlantic program in Lake Huron uh, is, is because of the, uh, the massive changes that we saw in the, the predator prey uh, species in, in Lake Huron. Uh, when the alewife population crashed in Lake Huron, that led of course to the collapse of the, 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 excuse me, the Chinook salmon fishery in Lake Huron. And uh, the anglers wanted something to replace it. Uh, and, and, uh, Atlantic salmon uh, were doing well in, in the St. Mary's River and in the northern parts of Lake Huron, so that was a, a natural fit for, for, uh, for us to try and expand that program. Uh, some of the things that we're up against as we, as we try and expand that program, uh, you know, we don't anticipate a whole lot of, of negative interaction or, or impact on the, on the other uh, fisheries in the lake as a result of stocking the Atlantics, but there are some some things that we're up against. Uh, one of the biggest things that we're up against is the uh, uh, increase in, in uh, the lake trout population in, in Lake Huron. Uh, the time of year that we're stocking the fish you know, in the spring, that's when uh, water temperatures are still cold and, and the, the lake trout are in these near shore areas. Uh, and they are a, a major predator on, on the fish that we stock. So that's one of the things that we're up against. Um, you know, the, the, the Atlantics are a more omnivorous, I guess, than, uh, than uh, the Chinook salmon. They're, they're a little bit more varied in their diet, a little bit more similar to steelhead, really. So they're able to, uh, the thought was that they would be able to, to do well in the same environment that the steelhead are doing well in. Uh, so the, the decrease in alewife population uh, really isn't gonna play a major impact on whether or not the Atlantics are gonna be able to survive. Although the university has done quite well in their current facility, the plan is to expand the program with the addition of a new lab that would not only add to the hatchery, but would also add more area for research, outreach, and education. This project has been a collaborative effort between the university, the DNR, and Cloverland Electric, and the results speak for themselves. Special thanks to Roger and Ed for providing some insight on Atlantic salmon here in the Great Lakes. If you've ever wondered what happens in a taxidermy shop behind the scenes when you take your deer there, well, we're gonna show you just that right now. Just after deer season, Jordan and I met up at Wildlife Reflections Taxidermy in DeWitt to see just what goes into making a quality white-tailed deer mount. Mark Esch has been doing wildlife mounts for years and took us through the process. Hi, I'm Mark Esch from Wildlife Reflection Taxidermy. Um, to show all the different steps, there is a, putting a white-tailed deer shoulder mount together. Um, there's lots of steps from receiving the deer, um, taking measurements, uh, skinning out the deer, fleshing it down, salting it, and then sending it to the tannery. Um, then after that, obviously, you do that from the tannery, you have to do a lot of steps of prepping the skin uh, for the mannequin uh, that we put the skins on. Um, and then after that, you have to prep the, the mannequin or the form. And basically, the steps there would be to rough the form up, to uh, put a septum in the nose, uh, install the antlers, install the eyes, before the skin is put on the form, it has to be prepped. There are lots of little things that go into this step to ensure a high quality mount. Nasal septums are added to give the interior of the nose the correct look. When it comes to the, uh, the, the cape or the skin for the white-tailed deer, um, you have to obviously you know, flesh it first, salt it real well, get into the tannery. The tanner, when they receive it, is basically like cardboard. It's very salt dried. They do that because when they put it in their, in their tanning solution, it has to be soak up the tan real well. Um, they do that and then they shave it and they tumble it, oil it, and it gives a, then I get this cape back from the tannery. Um, at that point, um, I might get mine wet tanned so they're already wet to prep for the, the form. Um, I have to thin down the ears, the eyes, the nose, turn the ears all the way out. Is there any holes in the cape? I have to sew them up also. Um, just to make sure it's 100% clean, thin. Uh, it's going to be as thin as possible uh, to be Put in place. Um, at this point, uh, once everything has been thinned down, the ears are turned, you have to turn all the way to the very edge. At that point, you pretty much glue the ears in place. 
and one thing to consider also is that there, and it comes to doing any animal or, or a deer, is um, there's different ear sizes, different ear positions. You can do it ears back, ears forward, one back, one forward. That's totally up to the customer. On a good tax drumming mount, you'll see that the, the ears have not drummed. A lot of that comes down to um, knowing the proper size of ear liner or whatever you might use for the ear. Some guys use Bondo, some guys use ear liners. Um, but to make sure the skin is not too tight. Uh, if the skin is too tight, it is going to drum, and therefore you could have problems down the road. When it comes to drumming, that means that the skin is not tight to the ear liner, um, and that it was definitely pulled too tight and was not glued down properly. The eyes are a very important part of any wildlife mount. If they don't turn out right, the whole mount is ruined. Mark takes special care in making sure the pupil is horizontal before the form is covered in glue and the skin is stretched over the form. Then the real magic happens. The skin is moved and placed in the correct position to resemble the live animal. When it, when it comes to um, the skin placement on a deer or anything else that you might be working on as far as taxidermy, a lot of things, a lot of it is to know the anatomy of the animal you're working on. Um, to know where things should lie, uh, skin, muscles, um, eyes, ears, everything like that. And therefore, you have a nice quality mount that way. Um, when you know the anatomy and, thing, and skin goes where it's supposed to go, a lot of it is looking at the live, you know, live animal or even have reference pictures of different parts of the animal so you know where the things are supposed to go. And what I've done here, I've put clay on top of the brain ridge to uh, basically put all the muscles, where the muscles are back in and, and everything. You want to make everything as full as it was when the deer was alive. Now here I'm doing the same thing on the ears. I'm trying to rebuild the muscle that was there so it looks nice and full. You can even put creases in there if you like to for the muscles. Just to build up as much muscles as you can that were originally there in the first place. After the ears are somewhat in position, it's time to sew up the skin down the back of the neck. A good taxidermist stitches will lay flat and won't create a mane down the back of the neck. Lips are tucked into the form in exactly the right location. Then comes the critical eyes. With an expert touch, Mark places clay and glue and moves the eye skin into the correct areas so that it looks lifelike. We mounted a deer um, and let them dry and done all the finishing work. Um, this one's complete besides fixing an antler. Um, a lot of things to look for in a, a mount, a quality mount in my opinion. Uh, for one, the first thing would be a brisket that is lined up straight. It's not off to the side too far. Um, the ears, that there's no drumming on the ears. That the ears are symmetrical on both sides from the antlers, whether it be back or forward. Um, the eyes, <clears throat> same thing, it's symmetrical as far as where they're placed. Um, the, Eyelashes come down over the eye a little bit. That's very natural. Um, eye rotation, if you want that. The, the tear ducts are, are tucked in deep. They're not open. Um, that the nose is not just plug flush. You have a, a nice septum or something that you can look like natural looking in there. That <clears throat> the nose wings, as they call them, are lined up on the front. Same as the, as the bottom lip. Um, that that's tucked in and, and showing real nice. Um, and the white patch is something that needs to be symmetrical also, that is lined up nice and, nice and uh, straight on both sides, and that's what you look for in a quality mount. It's absolutely incredible how a good taxidermist can bring life back to a tanned hide. Special thanks to Mark for letting us stop into his shop and see how a whitetail mount comes together. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. A couple quick things before we go. If you're looking for something fun to do this weekend, our friends over at SCI are having a big outfitters night. That's going to be free for all hunters and their families. That's on February the 12th. If you'd like some more information on that, you can check out our Facebook page. We have all the information there. Also coming up in the next couple of weeks, February the 25th, we have Big Buck Night East. That's going to be at Outdoor Rama down in Novi. That's always a lot of fun, so mark your calendars and come be a part of that if you'd like to uh, see all the big deer and hear the stories. Our friends at Vanguard are going to be helping us out with some great prize packages as well. Now, coming over the next few weeks here in Michigan Out of Doors, we got some more ice fishing, a little bit more coyote hunting, maybe some more rabbit hunting. So lots of good stuff happening right now in the state of Michigan. Get out there and enjoy it. And if we don't see it in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by 
by the Michigan chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Showspan, producing consumer shows including Outdoor Rama February 25th through 28th at Novi Suburban Showplace. The show features tackle, trips, boats, outfitters, wildlife encounters, and of course, Big Buck Night. That's Outdoor Rama in Novi, February 25th through 28th. By Eagle Claw Chappelle, offering a line of pop up and flip over shelters and the new cabin style Bay Runner 2. Chappelle also offers a selection of sleds, including the new winter camo pattern jet sled. Eagle Claw Chappelle, we have you covered. On the web at chappelle.com. Closed captioning is provided by the Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. White-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a Michigan man From the Keweenaw down to St. Joe Kalamazoo, East to Monroe To St. Marie and back again I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man That's where I'm from and I'll show you my 